Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our praise service this morning. Do we have some announcements, Kevin? Just a couple quick announcements. Today at 9.15, the Children's Sunday School presentation of the Signs of Christmas will take place right here in the sanctuary. Um, tomorrow night is Ladies' Night Out. And then I have an announcement from Linda Hoke. The cookie sale is going on this Sunday. Orders can be placed in the basket in the gathering space. You can pick up your orders next Sunday. Those who ordered cookies for pickup today will find them in the gathering space. Also, thank you to all who have ordered or will order cookies from the Emanuel Youth. And then there's other announcements and more details about all this along with the schedule for the week in the bulletin. Thank you. We'll begin our worship this morning with the lighting of the Advent candle by Bob and Julie DeJong and their family. candle for the second Sunday. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. From the prophet Isaiah, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah verse nine, chapter, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. From the Gospel of John, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in the countries of our world. Help us to see the paths of peace in our lives and then give to us courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you only are the giver of lasting peace and that you are always with us. Amen. stand and we'll continue our worship with the reading of the psalm. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that, that he, he may, may rule your, your people righteously and, and the poor, poor with, with justice. justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let, Let him defend the needy among, among the people, people rescue the poor, and, and crush the oppressor. oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. Let, Let him come, come down, down like rain upon the mown field, like, like showers that water the earth. In his time may the righteousness flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord, Lord God, God, and the God, God of Israel, 
you alone do wondrous deeds. And blessed be your, gen your glorious name forever, and may all the earth be filled with your glory. Amen, amen. And we sing our gathering song, Bless His Name. One, two, three. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our life, our mercy, our might. Amen. As we await the day of the Lord, let us confess our sin. Amen. 
great and holy one, in this time of waning daylight, we confess the shadows of sin in our lives. We build ourselves up at the expense of others. We rely on our own efforts to make our lives secure. Yet you, O oh Lord, are the potter, and we are the clay. Come to restore us in your image. Remake us into your people and rebuild what sin has broken, that we and the whole creation may rejoice. Amen. Fear not, people of God. The Almighty has done great things for us. God casts away our sin from us and makes of us a new creation. In Jesus Christ, God comes to set us free. Take heart in the tender compassion of our God. Amen. Amen. in our hearts, Lord, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah, reading verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, 
The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze their young, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hands on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> The second reading is from the 15th chapter of Romans, reading verses 4 through 13. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter, reading verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Lord, be with us this day as we meditate upon these readings for Advent. Help us to still our minds and our hearts from all the busy preparations in which we indulge, and help us to hear what you would have us hear this second Sunday of Advent. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we are very conversant with the symbols of Christmas, are we not? Trees, poinsettias, stars, Santa Claus, candy canes, reindeer, just to mention a few on and on it could go. But the season of Advent is sparse by comparison. I think Advent calendars and Advent wreaths about sum it up. But as we glance at today's gospel lesson, perhaps we might discover another symbol. The way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, shouts John the Baptist. And in another place, prepare a highway for our God. John the Baptizer is one of the most vivid characters in the drama of redemption. You can almost hear the rasp of John's voice and feel the scrape of camel hair, camel hide on his back. There he is, barefoot atop a rock, waving a willow branch in his hand. He's coming, John yells. Clear the boulders, level the ground, dig the roadbed, make it run true. Today, a highway. A way cuts through the middle of John's sermon. How do you see that highway? How would most Ohioans see it? Is it level? Is it smooth? Is it straight as Interstate 75 slicing across the center of Ohio? Or is it more like a a dirt road, rugged and sturdy, parting the trees and disappearing into the gloom? Now, most of us aren't inclined to think too much about roads or highways. Our minds tend to focus on destinations, not the roads that take us there. And yet, every road carries a history. Every road carries a history. And here in Ohio, we know the importance of the roads that carry our history. Highways, railroads, dirt roads, side streets, it just doesn't matter. Every road holds a history, trampled by animal hooves and and moccasins, car tires and wagon wheels, work boots, tennis shoes, barefooted children, white-bellied snakes and deer springing along, 18-wheelers, RVs, and state troopers. Roads carry history as well as people. And in today's gospel, the road carries God. So grab the shovel, crank up the bulldozer, make straight the highway for our God. When John bellowed these words, they landed on a road that was cluttered with rocks and stumps, rugged and rough. And like a fire ranger in a time of drought, 
John the baptizer scanned the sky for signs of smoke, and he grabbed his ax to clear the brush. For soon, God would arrive, and God help the man whose road gets choked with the debris of this age. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Grab the shovel, clear the debris that distracts you from even giving the Lord a second thought. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. It's a great novel out there. It's called The Clearing by Tom Gautreaux. It tells the story of a man who leaves the comfort of New England and travels to the swamps of Louisiana in search of an older brother. He soon learned that this brother he is searching for suffers from mental illness and has cut himself off from his family. The story takes you to a land of violence and greed played out in a deep forest. It's a desperate story, you see, of a rescue mission where timing matters and where there's no time to waste. And that's the road of Advent, of God's coming. It's just that kind of road, an urgent kind of travel. This road, this path of God is built to transport salvation, salvation to prisons, to run down neighborhoods and rural communities struggling to survive. This road is crowded. It is crowded with all sorts of people. It's crowded with decrepit motels and truck stops and police dogs sniffing for drugs. And all along this road, there are amber alerts. They flash their message into the night. Someone is lost. Someone precious is lost. Help us. Please come to our aid. Come, Lord Jesus. This is John's gospel road, his desperate scheme of Advent transportation. Through small towns and big cities, on country lanes and four-lane roads, our Savior travels. He comes to rescue the lost. He comes to rescue us. So clear the road. Let us rid ourselves of everything that obstructs God's way. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. In all of John's proclamation, it is filled with the images of cleansing and straightening paths and cutting down useless trees and burning away chaff in the fire. You see, this is John's baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It means cleansing, but it also means a changing of the mind, a turning toward Jesus so that one whole self is pointed toward the Lord of this world and of eternity. Ask yourself this day, what are the rough places that need to be leveled in my life? What is the chaff in my life that needs to be burned off? Now we cannot ignore the blunt words that are directed towards the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Why was John so blunt and brutal with them and not with the Masses that had fr fr throng, came to his flock, to his place in the water. Well, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were the self-righteous, and the masses were the victims of that self-righteousness. It is no different today. Is a sense of self-righteousness chaff that needs to be burned off of your life? If so, burn it, for it obstructs your view of God and allows you to worship yourself rather than Jesus Christ. But that's not the only chaff that must be cast into the fire. Our confession and forgiveness gives us even others, perhaps raising ourselves at the expense of others, caring for ourselves more than anyone else. To do all of this road cleansing and clearing we will have to call upon the Holy Spirit. We will have to call upon the Holy Spirit in our life each and every day to clear away the debris and that work in clearing away the debris of the world. Remind yourself each day of this Advent season that you are a child of God and allow the Holy Spirit to work through you to being priest to all that you love and peace to all the world. We never said that clearing the road would be easy. It's a daunting, exhausting task. 
but it calls upon us to look at ourselves and wonder, how much better can I be in the name of Christ? Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Make straight the highway for our God. Amen. Would you please stand for the song of the day, Days of Elijah? One, one, two, one, two, red, and. Righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert cry, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call. days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 seated and if the ushers will come forward we'll have our offering special music this morning is by bethany rice and terry turner
Would you please stand with me and join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had poured it out, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of all sin. Do this in remembrance of me. You may be seated. If the assistants would please come forward, we will proceed with Holy Communion. for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Stay in the ways of his 
his mercy as deep cries out to deep we sing come lord jesus come come lord jesus come come lord jesus come come lord jesus come all who are thirsty all who are weak come to the fountain dip your heart in the stream cries out to deep, we sing, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Deep cries out to deep, we sing, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. come to your 
Would you please rise and clasp the hand of someone near you? Dear God, bless us with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen us and give us the power of your love each and every day. Amen. Amen. Cool. In hope and anticipation, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Renew us in the covenant of your Son, O Holy One, and revive us by the outpouring of your Spirit, your Spirit who leads us to wisdom, understanding, and faithfulness in you. Today we pray especially for Trinity Lutheran Church in Melinta and their pastor, Adrian Meyer. Dear God, establish harmony in all creation that all living things may work according to your loving and generous purpose. Fill the earth with your goodness and glory. Almighty God, send your spirit to those who hold power and authority among the nations. Lead them to tend to those who are poor and meek with your righteousness and justice. Dear God, by your word and your people, encourage and give heart to those who have lost hope in the face of depression, disease, and death. We pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, along with those that we name aloud or silently at this time. We pray for the family and friends of Barb Smith. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving and blessings upon the baptism today of Madeline Ray Lee. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the birth of Nicholas, the grandson of Erica Milligan. We pray for those in care of facilities those bound at home and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military. Dear God, give faith in your promises to all those that are in need of healing. Heavenly Father, shape this faith community into a place of welcome and support for all people. Feed and strengthen us by your gifts of grace that we may share them with others. Dear God, you have gathered the saints into your holy and eternal presence. Make us steadfast in the faith until we are all made one in your new creation. Almighty God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when the people of God bring justice and righteousness. We close our worship this morning with our sending song, Holy is the Lord. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him
Go in peace, bring good news to the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life, and we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 for the contemporary worship and at 10.30 for the traditional worship service. Thursday evenings at 7 we have our praise service, and on the fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30 we have our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio. No gift is too small and will help us with our mission of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.